So the gods at Loitly Tech have blessed us with a Microsoft Flight Simulator driver for their multi panels, switch panels, instrument panels and everything else in between really. Today I'll be giving you guys a tutorial on how to set it up. It's pretty simple but in case you're stuck you've came to the right place. So stay tuned. Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stud, and as I said, welcome back. Now today I'll be showing you how you can set up your Logitech panels, whether it's a switch panel or multi-panel or instrument panel, with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I have to say, it works really well. Every single switch I've tried so far, so you can see the battery turns off there, works very well. It's actually more well integrated than it was on X-Plane 11. It's a very exciting development, so I'll be showing you guys how you can set it up. If you're new here, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I do flight training videos, flight sim videos, trip reports and a lot more, so if you love everything about aviation, you've certainly come to the right place. Be sure you smack that subscribe button now. But anyway, let's get into this video. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is come over to the Logitech website. I've put a link in the description for the official one but if you can't find it just search up flight multi-panel logitech or whatever you want you've got and come down here and click support and it should take a bit, a bit of time to load even though i've got good internet but there we go and then come over to downloads and click show all downloads i'm um, no it's popped up it's auto detected if it doesn't auto detect click show all downloads and i will ask you to choose your os now here you can see the Microsoft Flight Simulator plugin. Now I have to admit, before this plugin, it was quite difficult to find the X-Plane 11 and FSX one. So it's quite nice. They've put it here. It just pops up straight away. And you can see it adds all support for all Logitech flight panels, instrument, switch, multi and radio, which is very epic. And it's basically oven ready. You can download it and go. Now it says here, this will be addressed in an upcoming patch. This is referring to you having to start up the Logitech Microsoft Simulator plugin on your desktop. To be honest, I didn't. I think it automatically started up, but in case it doesn't, I'll show you how to do that. So then of course you want to click download. I've already downloaded it. It comes up there. It's really easy. You can click on it now and run through it again. I'm not going to install it again. I'll just run the video of me installing it earlier. Really easy to download. Click yes and agree basically. You guys can do that. It's basically your generic .exe. So once it's downloaded, you could notice now we've got the Logitech Microsoft Flight Simulator plugin in the top left corner. It will be somewhere on your desktop. If you can't find it, it will be in your system files somewhere. And if not, just re-download it. It might have failed to download, but it should be around there somewhere. And all this is really for is if it doesn't start up automatically, you can just click on it once you've started Microsoft Flight Simulator and everything should connect. Okay, so we've started up Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you've got your panels plugged in, the lights may turn on if they're successfully connected. So for example, right now, I can see my landing gear light, which is pretty cool. And you may also be able to see on my autopilot panel that the heading light has come on, which is pretty epic. Uh, basically means it's connected. Okay, so the only way to really test if it's worked is to start a new flight. I'm just gonna go where I was earlier, set that as my departure and let it load up. Now, as stated on the Logitech website, if it doesn't connect, all you need to do is click on the desktop application. If it's already connected, it will come up with an error message saying it's basically already connected. Now, once patch two comes out, I believe it will automatically connect itself. So you don't even need to worry about that. It's a very easy process, very seamless. So once it loads up, we'll just go through some of the features and if they all work. So here we are in a Cessna Cetacean on the end of the runway at Echo Golf Sierra Hotel on my local airport Norwich. Let's see if things work. So first of all, we'll turn our battery on. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, that's worked perfectly. Let's look at the batteries and see if we can actually see stuff. And alternator, yep, that came on, right engine. So I suppose it does right and left at the same time. So if I move the camera there, we're gonna get the yoke out of the way. So avionics master does work, I'm just not sure. <laughs> I just can't find it. So let's move on. Fuel pump, yep, fuel pumps work. You can see down here, so if you're flicking it there. Turn off, that turns off, turn on, turns on, of course. De-ice, uh, where's my de-ices? They're down here, aren't they? <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm not too familiar with this aircraft. But I know de-ice worked, it popped up on the screen there. And Peter Heat definitely works, there we go, Peter Heat left and right. You guys are probably getting a really annoying warning now, so let's get rid of that. Okay, panel lights, let's see. I'm not really going to be able to see them in the dark, but I do know they work, I've tested them before. Beacon, let's see, yep, beacon lights come on. Nav lights come on. Strobe lights come on. Taxi lights come on. 
And landing lights come on. There's all the lights. Let's turn these bad boys off. There we go. Of course, you can't turn on logo lights, but there we go. And panel lights, I believe, are at the top. No, nope, that's another aircraft. Okay. Magnetos, of course, we haven't got these in the aircraft, but I know they work in the Cessna. And landing gear, you guys are going to get a warning. You can hear that now. And you can hear landing gear warning. And you can see it come up on the screen. So we know that works. Now let's move over to the autopilot panel. Okay, so here we are looking at the multi-panel or autopilot panel. And I know autopilot works because it flashes and you can see AP comes on there, which is pretty epic. Heading, if we set it, you can see we've got a blue dotted line there, which is pretty epic. And if we turn that, it's actually very responsive. I'm very impressed. Navigation also works. You can see FMS, which uh, saves you from scrolling back in the pages to find FMS and indicated airspeed. I'm not sure if that's popping up anywhere, maybe because I haven't set it. So if we just give it some speed, I'm not too sure about that one, but oh, there we go. I think I can, yeah, I can see speed rolling up slowly. There we go. But there we go. Altitude, of course, works. There we go. And vertical speed, you can see 2000, I believe that says. I think it's a bit zoomed out for me at the moment. Approach mode also works, so yeah, it's very cool. Final thing we're going to check is flaps. Okay, so here we are looking at flaps, and I believe they're all the way down. Of well, but yeah, so there we go, down, fully down now, and fully up. There we go, flaps work well. Auto throttle is also enabled, that's pretty cool. So there we have it, guys. In this aircraft, every single function works on mostly every single function that we've got in this aircraft. Anyway, I'm very impressed, I'm pretty sure it works in most aircraft. I'm going to test it out with the Cessna in a little while, but in the Cessna Cetacean, it certainly works well, so I wouldn't see why it won't work in others. So there you have it, guys. I really hope this has helped. If you're confused about anything, make sure you tell me in the comments. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is download the driver and install it, then start Microsoft Flight Simulator and make sure your panels are connected. If the panels don't connect straight away, then go onto your desktop and click on the application and it should say whether it's connected now and then hop in the plane and it should be ready to go. I hope this has really helped. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. I'm very impressed. Logitech have done a great job here, even though it was a bit late, but that doesn't matter. It's sorted now. Of course, they need to sort out the automatic startup, but I'm sure that will come with patch two. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks to all my captains as always. If you want to find out how to become a captain and get your name at the end of a the video, then just go onto my Instagram and then go onto my Discord. It's all on there. But from me today, guys, that is all. I hope you really enjoyed this video and I hope I've helped you out. Bye bye.